Mm, okay, okay, so we're going to begin. We're going to uh, start from where we ended last time. Yeah, so before we begin, we're going to pray. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, I'll come before the throne of God. I'm asking you to impact in me wisdom so that I may be able to teach and also understand into my, into my students, so God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Yeah, so um, uh, without wasting our time, uh, today we're going to try to finish off this chapter, the last chapter, then um, after we finish it off, we're going to try, we're going to try to solve some questions, then it will be it for today, yeah. So we'll solve some questions, then after that, I will, I will give you some work to do, yeah, some, um, some homework. So, um, yeah, so uh, last time we were talking about the charge, what the charge is, we talked about the positive, the negative charges, those are the things which you are, are looking at, we talked about when you, uh, uh, when you try rubbing something, like when you try rubbing and a nanometer on the floor, you create some some charge, some charges are transformed to that nanometer, and uh, that nanometer the rod will become uh, charged. We talked about the glass, the plastic, the glass is charged. Uh, we, uh, we talked that, uh, about that uh, the uh, the glass is charged positive, the plastic is charged negative, and uh, yeah, and. Those are the things which are uh, uh, do, do, uh, those are the things which we uh, we looked at. We also looked at about. We also looked at. Uh, I also looked at uh, the the at uh, the distribution of charges when you have a lot of charges which are uh, when you got a lot of charges which are dis distributed on. Uh, on one point, how do you calculate the density distribution? Uh, yeah, we looked at that also. So uh, we looked at uh, different formulas about the distribution. So we looked at the density volumetric the charge, where we use rho is equal to dq over dv. Then you also looked at uh, the density surface of the charge when uh, when the charge, when there were a cloud of charges on the surface, we, uh, we, we, we looked at the formula which we use. We use, uh, uh, this is a sigma is equal to dq, which is a differentiation of the charge over ds, which is the surface where you can find those charges. Uh, it's a distribution, a cloud of charges, meaning you can't really know where the charges are. That's why we use dq, which is differentiation q. Then also looked at, um, yeah, we also looked at the charge lineage, charge lineage where a charge, there are a, a lot of charges, a cloud of charges, density lineage, the charge where you see a, a lot of cloud uh, of charges, uh, which are, are on, on the what, are on, uh, which are presented, uh, I can say, uh, which are on a line and uh, we said that their formula is lambda is equal to dq. dq is the number of charges, the cloud of charges, which the quantity of charges which you don't know, uh, which which you cannot count, divided by the air, which is actually the length where those charges are found. So we looked at uh, the distribution of charges. Those are things which we looked at. So uh, this is just a wrap. Here. So today, basically, we're just going to um, to finish off with. Uh, 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 with the last part, which is the force column. So basically, we are going to look at the forces. How does uh, the forces react when you have? Uh, how does uh, uh, yeah? How does the forces? Uh, uh, the interaction of forces when you have two things which are charged. What usually happens? So we are going to look it in details, and we are also going to look at the formulas which we use. To calculate uh, these uh, uh, the forces, so I don't know if you are able to see my 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 sharing. Before we begin with uh, today's today's the last part. Yes, we can Thank see. You. Yeah. So uh, so today basically today is, is we're going to talk about force and force. Uh, it's not something new actually. I can say so. It's not something new. It's uh, something which we have already uh, 
uh, learned in secondary school. And uh, when you talk about uh, force, force is uh, uh, something which acts on the other thing, like you cause the force when you, uh, you introduce or you, uh, uh, you, uh, you act on, on something. If you act on a surface, you, uh, like you are causing a force on the surface. There's a, uh, an action which is, uh, I can say, uh, an action which is, uh, 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 which is put towards something which is, uh, that's, I can say that, that that's the simplest way to talk about force. So when you talk about force, actually we're going to talk about how uh, one charged particle acts on another charged particle and what will be the result that, what will be the, uh, the effect of one charged particle acting on another charged particle. So here, when you talk about force, actually we, uh, we are going to talk about force the column. Force the, the column uh, is basically uh, the force which deals with it are the charges, the positive, the negative charges. And column, uh, you know that column is uh, the unit which is, uh, uh, the, uh, the unit for charge is column most of the time. Yeah, the unit for charge is uh, column. So here we're going to, uh, basically when you hear the force, the column is basically we're going to talk at, uh, we're, we're going to look at uh, uh, the forces which uh, are caused by um, uh, by one charge, uh, yeah, but 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 yeah, the forces which one charge causes onto another charge, and what do uh, what is the resultant? What is the reactant if those forces they are uh, if, 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 if 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 one what if uh, if one charge particle cause uh, an action on another on another charge particle, what will be the result that that's what we are basically going to look at. So um, we start here, it says, on considère des particules uh, chargées, uh, on, on, on considère des particules chargées ponctuelles. So punctual, when, when I talked about punctual, uh, basically they are just talking about charges which are, uh, I can say, uh, charges which are isolated in such a way that are charges which you yourself, you can see charges which you, uh, the, there's a difference between density distribution, density distribution is a cloud of charges where there are a lot of charges in such a way that you cannot count and the, uh, you cannot know where this charge is. It's like the charge is found everywhere. That's the uh, density distribution. There's a cloud of charges where a charge can be found a, a, uh, anywhere. And um, when you talk about charge, Punctual, charge punctual. Actually, we talk about a charge which you you can uh, you can be able to uh, to add to uh, the charge which you can be able to uh, point out, which is isolated. I can say so. It's not found everywhere, but it's isolated and it's fixed at is 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 what is is only uh, found at a certain place. So uh, so you you see these two things like uh, when 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 we are doing when we are dealing with questions. You see these two things coming in time, yeah. We will see them. They will be, uh, will be repeating. We will say distribution, this is distribution, or we say charge punctual. You 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 see that eh? when you talk about charge punctual, we talk about charges which are fixed, charges which are not found everywhere. Like you can be able to point out, but when you talk distribution of charges, we talk about charges which form a cloud and. Uh, and uh, these charges, they are found almost anywhere. And, and for you to calculate this charge, you have to do some uh, differentiation, which uh, you are going to, uh, to see when we come to do the questions. You are going to understand it more. So here, uh, here it continues saying that C1, the charge, uh, C1, the charge Q1, C2 on par M1. So, uh, they, they want here. They, they just want to explain to us there's uh, a particle which is named C1, which is this side here. If you see the uh, diagram here, this is a particle which is named C1. And uh, imagine it as the charge of what Q1. This is the charge of Q1 situated on point M1. So this is a point M1. So this one, uh, if we talk about charge punctual, they have a fixed point. They, they have a point where. Uh, you cannot find them everywhere. They will, they will specify the point that they are found on, 
point M1, point A, point B. And um, there's also a particle which is what C2, the charge Q2. You have a particle which is C2, which is charged what Q2, situated on point M, which is situated at the point what M2, which is M2 here. So um, you see that there we've got two particles, and these particles have got what charge. They, are, they have got charges. The one particle is charged what Q1, and the second particle is charged Q2. And uh, these uh, these what uh, these two particles they are uh, in a way that uh, they, you know that if if uh, if you bring two two charged particles together, there will be either an attraction or repel. So you see that if you bring these two particles together, Q1 and Q2, depending with the sign of Q1 and Q2, you see that there will be either a, an attraction and uh, or uh, there will be either a, a, an attraction or a repulsion, where you see uh, two things are repelling, like yeah, they're uh, separating. So. Um, yeah, so basically here, that's what they are talking about. You have got two particles which are charged Q1 and Q2, and on a pair, R, the distance M1 and M2, and we have got R, which is the distance between what M1 and M2. So you have got two charged particles, Q1, Q2. The distance between uh, two charged particles, which is M1 and M2, which is the R is equivalent to M1, M2, which is equal to the module of M1, M2. This is what the R. So this is the distance which separates two charged particles. So, uh, so basically here, just uh, for, for the first part here, just know that uh, when you have uh, two charged particles, there's either attraction or Repulsion. So we're going to look in detail what happens if there's an attraction and what happens when there's repulsion. So yeah, so when, when we go down, we're going to look in details and um and uh, for you to uh to calculate uh, to calculate the the what the uh the force which is caused since you know that there's always a force when there's an attraction, there's always a force which is causing it to attract, or when there's a repulsion, there's always a force which is what causing it to what to repel. So what is that formula for the force? Uh, uh, how can you calculate, calculate the force? So for you to calculate the force, you, we have an expression mathematic, which is force uh, vector. This is the vector force, one to two. So here, when, when you see one to two, you should always not. When you see one going towards two, it means that the force is caused by this charged particle, which is one, towards the the the, the what the charged part the charged particle to, which is what two. So there's a force which is created, or there's a force which is yeah there's a force which is uh, created by Q1, which uh, uh which which what which 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 causes uh Q2 either to move away or to be attracted. It depends with the sign. If it's positive sign, it will cause Q2 to move away. If it's a negative sign, it will cause Q, Q2 to, what, to be attracted. So uh, basically it depends most of the time, they would, they would, they would, um, uh, uh, it depends with how the question they are phrased. It. The question they can phrase the question, they, 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 they can say calculate the force, uh, the vector force where two towards, imagine here there's two where there's one towards what? One, so it means there's a force which is created by the force, uh, the, the, uh, the, the particle which is creating uh, the force is what Q2 towards what Q1, but in this sense, it's what uh, the one which you have here is uh, 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 the charge one, Q1, the particle one, C1, is the one which is creating the force on what Q2. That's why I'm saying there's uh, force one to two, which is equal to K, K, which is a constant, uh, uh, times Q1. Q1 is the charge, the, 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 the charge for the first particle, times Q2, which is the charge for the second particle, divided by R squared, which is the distance between M, M1 and the M2, then uh, times the vector, which is 
one to two. So the vector is moving from since uh, since the force is created, Q one is the one which is uh, which is uh, exerting force on Q two. So the force is created from one to two. This is that's why you are saying you are seeing the vector u is equal to one to two. So here that, that that's what they are explaining here. So this is basically the the formula which you you should have by heart. Like you just have to know it when they tell tell you to calculate the force. Either when the charger are, are, are in distribution, the density distribution where you can find the charge are everywhere, or uh, the charge are punctual where a charge is fixed, where it has got uh, a fixed point. Uh, for example, here you have M1 and M2. M1 is a fixed point for charge one, and M2 is a fixed point for charge two. You have to, you can use the same formula where you just replace Q1 and Q2, which is, uh, they, they give you basically most of the time in your art. Uh, they give you most of, most of the times in your questions, what is your charge one and your charge two? And they also give you your, 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 your distance between the particle C1 and the particle C2. And uh, with those uh, information, you can be, you can easily calculate uh, the, what, the, the force then K, K is always the same. K, you just have to know it by heart. It's a constant which is always the same. Uh, uh, no matter what, your K will always be what the same. So here, as I was explaining, you see that force, which is one towards two, a vector force one towards two, designer force exists by the charge Q1, so the charge Q2. So at the force, which is from one to two, it is, it, uh, it what, it, uh, it denotes or it uh, it defines the force which is exert uh, uh, exert uh, which is uh, uh, I can say exerted or exist yeah which is uh, yeah which is uh, exerted by the charge which is I can say another term which is uh, as I said the force which is, uh, Q1 uh, 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 Acts on what Q2 is the Q1 is the one which is causing the force on what on Q2. As they say in, in, in English, uh, the word has gone, but something which is it exists, like it it causes it 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 it, it, it causes an action. So we see that uh, the force exerted by the charge Q1, the force exists by uh, the charge Q1 uh, through the charge Q2. So a force which is caused by the charge Q1, which is uh, here. Uh, the particle you see one, uh, so the charge on the charge what Q2. So here you see Q1, which is what causing the charge. Yeah, it's yeah, it's the one which is exists, uh, which which is uh, which is what which is uh, uh, I can say which which is causing a, 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 a uh, which is causing an effect on charge two in other terms. Yeah, yeah. Which is causing a, 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 an effect on charge, charge two. Then you have got U vector one to two. Uh, this uh, this is a vector which is towards what the vector. So the, this vector depends where the charge is being exist or where the charge is being uh, exerted. Yeah, where the charge is being caused. So you see that the charge is Q one is the one which is causing the charge on Q two. So you see that uh, the vector it will be from one to two. The vector will be right from one to, to, to two. And, um, and, uh, and, and when, when, when you are taught to write your, 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 uh, your equation, you, you, you present it one towards two because the, 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 what, the, 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 uh, the force is caused from is is Q1 which is causing the force uh, to what to is, is, which is uh, exerting the force to Q2. Yeah, it's Q1 which is exerting the force to, to Q2. So you see that um, uh, you see that uh, uh, your vector it will be from one to two. Then K K as I said K K is a constant. K in a uh, constant derivative the epsilon zero. So K is a constant, which is a derivative of epsilon zero, and you don't uh, K 
k is equivalent to one over four pi epsilon zero. So this one, you just have to have it in your, like you just have to know it. You just have to know it. This one, one over four pi epsilon zero, uh, which is equivalent to nine times 10 to the power nine Newton per meter squared uh, times uh, uh, column negative uh, squared. So this is, uh, this is the formula which you have to know. So the K on K, you can either replace it with one over four pi epsilon zero, or you can replace it by nine times 10 to the power nine Newton uh, times meter squared times C negative uh, squared. So that, that, that's, yes, you have a question? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I just wanted you to repeat the previous statement on the the, the U. Oh, okay, okay. So, like as as I said, the first one is force, which is one to two. This is a force exerted by the charge Q one, so the charge Q two. So, uh, when you talk about force, it is one towards two. It design or it defines the force which is uh, exerted. Yeah, which is exerted. By the charge Q1, so the charge Q2. When I say exerted, exerted, in French is exerted, and in, in English, I think it's exerted. Yeah, some English words. They, they. Yeah, so I think there's no much difference. So when I say exerted, it means cause, which you cause, exerted is a cause. So when you see force one to two, you know that it is, um, you know that is the particle C1 which is causing, which is exerting a force on Q2, which is the one, is the one which is causing the force on C2. So you are moving from one to two. So it's Q1, which is exerting the force. Then when you see vector U, one to two, is just showing the direction where this force is being what? The direction where the force is being uh, exerted to. So uh, where is the force exerted to? Is exerted from, uh, Q1 to Q2. Yeah, so the force is exerted or exerted from Q1 uh, to Q2. So you your vector, you are moving from what? One to two. So this is just a vector which is showing you where your force is, uh, where your, your force is being exerted. Then K at your constant, K is, is a constant where- uh, Excuse me. Yeah. So if it was moving from Q Q two to Q one, it would be uh, one to or two to one. Yeah, if we see two to one, for example, if if your force they 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 tell you to calculate the force at two towards one, so it means you are moving from Q two going toward Q one. All right. So so if 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 it's, if 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 it's from charge two to charge uh, one, it means your vector, your direction here to be two to one. I don't know if you are, are getting it. Yes, yes, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Then the constant, the constant is always one over four pi epsilon zero. That's the constant. This one, you just have to, to know it by heart. That's the constant is always, uh, I can say it's always what is always, um, uh, uh, it's, it, it will never change, it will be always the same one. Like in any question which you are given, it will always be the same one, the constant never changes. Yeah, so I don't know if there's anyone with any question here. So you should also know that the, since R I have said is M1, M2, then you should also know that uh, uh, U1, when, when you're moving from one to two, is just the same as this is, this is, uh, this is I can say this is a formula which you just have to know by heart. There, there, are, no, there are no modules, just uh, yeah, forget this. So uh, U, one towards two, you just have to know it's just the same as this. M1, M2 divided by vector M1, M2 divided by M1, M2. But 
this one actually is not really important. Yeah, but you just have to know that when you're moving from one to uh, the, the direction, uh, the direction, the vector direction one to, to two, U one to two is also equal to, this one just have to know by heart is equal to the, uh, the vector of the distance, which is M1, M2 divided by uh, M1, M2, which is the module, just the same as the module. So, so yeah, so that's what you should know. The, the, what, the, 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 the vector of the vector one to two, U one to two, which shows the direction is equal to the vector of the distance, which is M1, M2, and the, the module of the distance, which is M1, M2. So this one is a formula which you have to know, and uh, you understand it better when we start doing some questions. That's when you understand it better. I don't know if there's any questions here. Yeah, so if there, there are no questions, we're going to go to uh, propriété important, some important properties of uh, these charges. You, you have to know these properties for you to uh, to be able to, uh, yeah, to be, for you to be able to, uh, uh, to be able to solve questions concerning the charges, you have to know how they move, what happens when, two charges, they come together, you have to know all those things. If you don't know, it will be really difficult for you to, uh, to calculate, to be able, for you to be able to, uh, to calculate uh, different, uh, when you're given different scenarios, it will be difficult for you to, to do the, calcula the, the, the calcula calculations. Yeah, so um, there's a first part. So these are different ways in which the charges can be. Uh, the, 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 the different ways in which the charges can be oriented. So you can have a positive charge and a positive charge. So when you are, uh, when uh, a positive charge uh, cause a force on another positive charge, you have repulsion. That's why you are seeing that uh, there's an arrow here, which is what going outside. And this arrow is, if you know, if you see here, you see force, the force which is a force which is caused here on Q2. So you see Q1 is the one causing the force here on Q2 and the Q2 is moving what outside. So you see here that you have force one towards two. So which just says that the force which is caused by Q1 towards Q2 in such a way that Q2 goes like it, it, it gets repelled. It gets, it goes, uh, uh, it, 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 there's repulsion which is taking place. Then there's also here, if you see here, there's also the going outside and uh, your friend had asked a question, uh, uh, if it is the other way around, is it going to be the direction? Is it going to be two to one or the first two to one? It's the same thing here. Here is Q2, which is causing the force on what? Q1, that's why I've seen the force is two towards one. So you see that there'll be a repulsion. So if there are two charges, two like charges, you see a repulsion, there will be a forces electrostatic repulsive, meaning there will be some separation. It's just the same thing we see, uh, negative, negative, there will be also what, some repulsion. If you have positive and negative, you see there will be what, some attraction. That's why you're seeing these arrows, they are coming what, inside, meaning this, uh, these two particles, they are, they are trying to come together because they are awful different charges. So if you have got different charges, you should know that the force which will be created there, it will be an attraction, which is, uh, uh, which is the coming together of uh, the, 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 the two particles of different charges. So that's what usually happens. So this is, this is important in such a way that you'll be given a, a, a diagram. Yeah, you'll be given a diagram uh, and they, uh, they give you that maybe they give you this particle is positive, the other particle is negative, and the other one is uh, negative. You have to know how to draw the uh, the vectors, the line, the, the line for forces. It's really important. You have to know to draw the line for forces. 
if it's positive, positive, you have to know that the force is going outside. If it's negative, positive, you have to know that if, again, in, in simpler terms, if it is the same signs, you have to know that the forces are always going right outside. But if it's uh, of what is, if it's of different signs, you have to know that the forces are what coming inside. So that's what you have to know. And if you know that one, you won't have any difficulties when it comes with it, uh, the uh, calculations. And, uh, and also, you should also know that this one is just a diagram here. When you see the diagram here, you know you should know that uh, the more you increase your R, the more your force reduces. Here is it's, it's, it's logic. You have seen your R, your R squared, which is the distance between the two charged particles. You have seen that is you are you are dividing like you are you are doing a division here, and you have got a constant which is always the same. So when you are always the distance between Q1 and Q2, for, uh, get uh, you, you can get an example where, uh, for example, if the charge uh, Q1 is positive two and the charge Q2 is positive three, when you increase the the, the radius between you increase the distance between these two charges you find that your R will become more big and bigger and your Q1 and Q2 will still be two and three. And you see that uh, your graph here, it will be your, uh, your force here, it will be what, reducing, reducing. And you see that uh, the more the your R becomes, becomes bigger, the more your force becomes small. Yeah, so it's like it's inverse proportion where when, the, the distance become bigger, the force reduces. So that's that's just, uh, I can say, you, you just have uh, to know that. And uh, I can say it's just, it's just logic when you are dividing with something. And if uh, that thing which, uh, for example, that thing which you are dividing with, the moment is, it starts becoming bigger, it, you see that there will be, uh, the, the value of your final answer will also start to reduce as long as the 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 what the the, the the values on top remain constant. So yeah, so that's it. So I don't know if there's any question here. If if you have any questions, you can ask. And so on this one, we conclude. Uh, we can conclude that the bigger the distance, the weaker the force. Yeah, that's true. The bigger the distance, the weaker the force becomes. Yeah, because when you increase the distance, the what the yeah when your area increases, uh the 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 what the, the the force reduces. So yeah, so that's true. The weaker the force, the the greater the distance. So where there is a, a, a large distance, or yeah, where there is yeah. Where the di distance is bigger, the force is small. Yeah, all right. So the principle, the superposition. So now our principle, uh, we are still on the properties. Is some important properties. So uh, principle of superposition. So here, uh, under principle of superposition, actually, uh, we are just going to talk about. Uh, there is one charge, and this one charge is uh, there are a lot of uh, other charges which are uh, exerting a force on it, which are causing a force on it. So, uh, what do you do? How do you calculate the force total of that charge, the force which is exerted on that charge? So, um, so here we say principle of the superposition on considering any part, 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 uh, particle charge qui exerce une influence sur la particule A, on a FA, is equal to F, uh, the force, this is force total, is equal to the force which is caused by one charge, plus the force which is caused by another, another charge uh, on this force, plus the force which is caused by uh, another charge until so on, so on. So it's just, it's just the same here. If you have a particle which is, uh, if you see this diagram, you have a particle which is, in the middle here, and you have got different what, particles which surrounds it. So for me to calculate the force which is created here, how, how do I do it? So for me to calculate the force which is created here, 
you see, uh, the force total is equal to the force which is created by Q1, the force which is uh, caused by Q1 on Q, plus the force which is caused by Q2 on Q. Since you, uh, I'll calculate the, it's like you are, you, you are, you, 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 um, it's like you calculate one force for one particle and another force for one particle, then you add them together. So here, the, the one which is affected is the one which is on the middle. So we see here that, uh, for example, here there's a charge Q, charge Q1, and charge Q2. So force total is equal to force one plus force two, which is equal to, force one is equal to constant. I said this one is always, uh, it will always be the same, it will never change, times Q1. Q1 is the one which is causing a force on Q. Q uh, yeah, times Q1 times Q, where you cause the force divided by a distance, the distance, uh, the distance which is between Q1 and, 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 and what, and, and, and Q. Q1 and Q, which is, uh, we'll call it X1 squared, then U1 vector. So when, um, uh, you should not confuse it when 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 you can. Uh, uh, there are two ways how you can write the, your vector. You can write your vector just writing u one. When you write u one, meaning you are starting from q one, going to uh, the other the other the other particle, or you can write u one towards two. It, it doesn't matter. What matters is what you put first. So what you put first, it that's what shows where you are going. So for example, here they've just written vector u1, which means that they're starting from q1 going to q. So if you want, you can you can you can put u1 towards uh, uh towards what towards uh since here in, in, in such a case there's q1, q2. Here if you want, you can you can you can just you can just you can just uh uh name it zero, so one towards zero. It's, it depends with you, but if you just, for in, in this case where you have put a lot of charges, you only show the first point where you are starting, where where the 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 the, the, what the force will be, uh, where the force is coming from. So here the force is coming from Q1. That's why they have showed only they have, they have written U1, which signifies that the force is in a direction from what U1 towards what uh, Q. Then plus plus there's Q2 here. Q2 here is exerting the force on what on Q. So we see here that there will be Q2 here is supposed to be Q2 times Q divided by uh this is R R2. So this is not X, this is R. Yeah, this is R2, two squared. So your R2 is just the distance between Q and what Q2. Yeah times the vector, which is what? U2. U2 meaning I'm starting from this part, Q2, going to what? To Q. So uh, that's how basically most of the time we are represented. If you are told to calculate the force at a certain charge and that charge is being exerted by different types, uh, I can say different, uh, yeah, uh, I can say is being, uh, that, that charge is being, uh, uh, the, there's a force from different other charges which uh, is being exerted on that charge. So you have to know how to uh, calculate its force. So you see here, um, in, in this case, in this case, the, the, the way they calculated their F1 and F2, they imagine that Q1 is positive and the Q, uh, Q is positive, Q2 is positive and Q is positive. So if Q1 is positive and Q is positive, it means that it, when Q1, this is, if you see here, there's an arrow here. When Q1 exerts a force on Q, there will be repulsion, which will cause what? F1, which is the force of going outside. Then when Q2 exerts a force on Q, which is positive, positive, there will be a repulsion, which will cause what? A force, which is what? F2. Then for me to calculate the force total, now I have to calculate the force total is force one, plus force two, which is here just, uh, 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 you, uh, you, you, you just extend here, they have, they have just done the extension of uh, this line. 
they, they have drawn an extension which is parallel to this line and the, an extension which is parallel to this line where they are cutting, they have made a, something like a rectangle and the, uh, you see here that uh, there's, uh, this is a force total. This is uh, the force uh, total which they are looking for the, uh, the, the, uh, the, yeah, the force total which they are looking for. So for you to calculate the force is force one plus force two. Force one which is created with Q1 and the force two which is created by Q2. I don't know if it's clear here. Is there anyone with any question here? I repeat, my check was cutting. What? My check was cutting. I repeat once more. Mm, okay, okay. So um, basically, I was talking about uh, the principle of superposition. So when you hear the principle of superposition, it's just a uh, different um, when you have different uh, particles which are charged causing, uh, I can say, uh, ex uh, exerting a force on, uh, on, on on one charge. So uh, how do you calculate each force total? So here you're just talking about the calculation of force total. So I said for you to calculate the force total, you have to, um, for you to calculate the force total, you uh, you have to uh, uh, you have to calculate the force of uh, each particle, which is caused on uh, the particle which you which you are studying, which is Q here. So the force of each 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 what the, the, the force of each particle which is called on a particle which uh, you are studying, and you add them. So here they have said that uh, the force is exerted on Q. So meaning Q1 is exerting a force on Q and Q2 is exerting a force on Q. So Q is the particle which we're going to study uh, in terms of what force is when, when, when these two charges, when they when they create a force or when they uh, exert a force on Q, what usually happens? What, 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 what total force are we going to have? So we see here that when Q1 exert a force on Q, you uh, when Q1 exert a force on Q, and we say that uh, the, the way they draw this one, they imagined, they imagined that Q and the Q, Q, Q1, Q, and Q2, they are all positive. So when Q1, this arrow is showing that it's exerting a force on Q. When Q1 exert a force on Q, what you see is that the, um, the force will be at the, the what they the, 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 there will be a repulsion, and when there, there is a repulsion, there will be a force which is F1, which is like moving outward, which is like wanting to separate these two, a force which is want, wants to separate these two, which is F1. Then when Q2 acts on Q, you see that there is a force also of repulsion, which is F2. Then uh, for them to find the force total, they just have to find the module of F2 and F1. How do they find the module of F2 and F1? They just extend the line which is parallel to uh, this line, which is the force F2, and the, the line which is parallel to the force F1. When they are meeting, they will make something like a, a rectangle. Then you uh, you draw your, this, this line represents your force total. This is your, your force total, which is the addition of F1 and the F2. So I don't know if it's clear. Then these are the equations. So here, you just replace where the F1 and F2 just replace with the equations which we have looked at here. Um, yeah, this equation here. So this is the equation. This is the equation of you to find the force. So this equation, you just have to know it. I don't know if it's clear. At least it is. Yeah, so so you understand it more when you start doing questions. You understand it more when you when you do some questions. So uh, we're still on the property important. So here they're just talking about the same thing. If you have uh, in in this case, if C Q uh, Q Q prime is greater than zero, meaning when you multiply Q and Q prime, you get your uh, your answer which is greater than zero, meaning you are multiplying a positive and a positive. When you multiply a positive and a positive to you, always you are going to have what? Um, 
you are going to have your answer which is greater than zero. So it's of the same sign. If it is of the same sign, if Q exert a force on Q prime, you have a repulsion where you have F prime, the force F prime, which is gone outside. If Q prime exert a force on Q, you have the, the force which is F, which is going what outside. But if you have Q times Q prime, which is less than zero, meaning when I multiply negative value of uh, post, uh, a positive charge and negative charge, I always have an answer which is negative and the negative uh, is less than zero. So what you see is that if Q prime uh, exert a force on Q, you see that there will be, uh, Q, if Q prime exert a force on Q, you see that there will be an attraction, which is the force F, that's why I've seen that it's coming, it's going inside. But yeah, and also when Q exert a force on what Q prime, you see that there will be an attraction. That's why you're seeing what F prime, which is what going inside. Yeah, so basically those are the things which you, are going, you, you, you have to know. And if you know how to interpret those things, you know how they arrows. So the most important thing is when you exert a force on something else, where do the arrows go? So you have to know if it's positive, if it's of the same sign, the force has to go outside. So yeah, the force has to go at the outside. And uh, if it's of the different sign, the force has to go inside like they are coming to, what, to, uh, to attract, they are coming together. Yeah, so that arrow is mean the force is, the force which, uh, maybe uh, the force which a Q prime or Q possesses is the force of attraction. If you see an arrow, a force which is going outside, it's a force of what? Repulsion. I don't know if it's clear here. Is there anyone with any question? Before we go to someone to solve some TD, is there anyone with any question? I guess no. Qua to dig one. I heard someone say, saying something. I guess no one. No, okay. So uh, before we, we go to our question, I want you to, um, yeah, I want you to uh, to know this formula. Like I want you to just, you just look at this formula then since it's the formula which mostly we'll be using, we'll be just changing depending with it, the question. So this is the formula which uh, when, you, when you come at forces, this is the formula which you usually use. So this formula you have to know it. It's really important and you have to know what your K is. Your K is equivalent to one over four uh, pi epsilon zero, uh, epsilon, which is, yeah, which is equivalent to nine times 10 to the power nine uh, Newton per meter square, uh, times meter squared times polar negative, uh, negative squared. So this one also you have to know it. You have to know for the force. Force is equal to K, Q1 times Q2 over R2, U1 towards what? U2. So now uh, we're going to do some questions. Mm. Are you able to see my sharing? Are you able to see my sharing? Oui. Yeah, so um, so uh, I decided to uh, do questions on, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do uh, about three exercises. Then I'll give you homework to search for uh, two exercises, which I, I want you to search. Yeah, there are two exercises which I'll give you at the end of this. So, um. We're going, to, we're going to start with exercise one, which is charge punctuel. And I said charge punctuel are charges 
when you when you see the word charge procure, you should know that there are charges which are uh they are fixed, you know where they are. There are charges which you know where they are, and they, are, they have got uh, I can say they have got a fixed point. They're not uh they are, they are not charges which you find uh everywhere or, or, or at 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 all places, but there are charges which were are just what fixed and you can easily point them out you can easily um yeah you can easily identify them because they are they are they are uh they are, i can say uh they're isolated in other terms they are isolated so we have exercise one which is under charge punctual so uh here the the question the the what it says trois charges q1 q2 and q3 so dispose selon the figure C this one. So we have got three charges, which is Q1, Q2, and Q3, which are disposed according to this figure, which you are seeing here. So I've got these what three charges. Then calculate la force resultant appliqué sur la charge Q3. So they are saying that calculate the force, a resultant force which is applied on the charge uh, uh, Q3. So here, uh, if I ask a question, according to uh, the way they have, they, have, they, have, they, have, they have written it, they have said there are three charges, Q1, Q2, and Q3, which uh, are, are disposed in this figure which you are seeing here, and they are asking you to calculate a force which is applied on charge three. So what does it mean when they ask you to calculate a force which is is applied on charge three. And if I ask you a question, uh, here, um, here, which charge is being affected? Which charge, since you have got about three charges here, there's Q1, Q2, Q3, which charge, uh, where is the force exerted? Is it, uh, uh, where is the force exerted? Is it exerted on Q3 or is it exerted on Q1 or is it exerted on Q2? Someone to answer me? Since they have seen calculate the force resultant applicable to like charge Q3. So where is the force exerted? Which charge, uh, 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 I want, uh, want, uh, want to tell me on which charge is the force directed? Is it on Q1, Q2, or Q3? Someone to help me? On Q3. What? The force is exerted on Q3. Q3, yeah, correct. All right, uh, that's, yeah, excellent. So uh, we see here that uh, as our friend has said, the force is being exerted uh, on Q3. The force is being uh, acted on Q3. So you see that there's Q1, Q2, and uh, there's Q1, which uh, uh, exert a force on Q3, and uh, Q2, which exert a force on what? Q3. So they want you to calculate the resultant force. When, when you see, uh, like according to the question, they say resultant force, which is applicable to the charge Q3. So for me to calculate the resultant force, it means I have to calculate the force which Q1 uh, exert on Q3, and uh, plus the force which Q2 exert on what? Q3. It's just the same thing with the example. So they have even given you on donne, they have given you that your Q1 is equal to positive 1.5. So point is basically most of the time uh, in um, the French system, when you're writing points, you don't need to, 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 to write like uh, uh, like our English system where you 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 you, you write a dot or what. When you're writing a point is a comma. So you have 1.5 five times 10 to the power negative one column, which is Q1. They have given you already Q1. Then Q2, they have said is equal to negative 0 0.5 times a dot in what in now, uh, in the French system, it signifies multiplication. So when you see a dot, when you see, I'll be, you, you see sometimes I put the multiplication sign, the actual multiplication sign, which you know, or I can put a dot, it's just the same thing. It means multiplication. So negative 0 0.5 times 10 to the power negative three columns, which is at uh, the charge Q2. And Q3, they have also 
given us each charge, which is positive 0 0.2 times 10 to the power negative three watt coulombs. Then they have given us the distance SC. SC, they have given us the distance, which is 1.2 meter, and BC, they have given us the distance BC, BC, which is what? 0 0.5 watt meter. Then they want us to calculate the force, which is exerted. Uh, 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 the force which is what the force which is uh, created on Q3 or which is exerted on what Q3. So how do you calculate the force? So first of all, you have to see the charges. If you see Q1, Q1 is positive. This is positive 1.5 times 10 to the power negative one. Q2 is what negative, negative 0 0.5 times 10 to the power negative three. Then Q3 is positive. So you have got it positive, negative, positive. That's the first thing which you have to note. So after after I've not I'll noted that one. So this one don't I don't pay attention to this one. I've made the mistake. So we're going to deal with this diagram here, which is here. So after you have uh, you have you have noted that Q1 is positive, Q2 is negative, and Q3 is positive. What do you do now? You have to represent it in your diagram. So how do you represent it in your diagram? You know that your Q1 is positive, your Q3 is are positive, the Q2 is what? Negative. So what happens? So we have said that Q1 is the one which exert the force on Q3. So when you exert the force, meaning it's coming from Q1 to what? To Q3. So what happens when you exert a force which is uh, uh, in a direction from Q1? So it's U, uh, vector U1. So this one is showing the direction which is exerted towards what? Q3. What happens? Since it's positive, positive when you exert a force on q3 you see that eh, you create a force one which is going what outside because eh, there will be a repulsion which is taking place here then when you exert a force q2 on q3 you see that eh, uh since q2 is negative q3 is positive you have a force of attraction that's why i'm saying that after i i exerted the force which is this direction from here b you see that eh, the Q3 also is also coming what inside, like they, they want to come together. So I will draw this, this two line. This will be my F2, then this will be my F1. Then I'll just extend it and extend it here. Then I'll have my force to, total. So this is the force which they want us to what to calculate. I don't know if it's clear until there. Is it clear? If there's any question. So, yeah, so if, if, if you're not clear, then you can stop me. So here, uh, your first one is this one. Your first two is this one, which is uh, created here. And now for me to have my first total, which is here, I have to add F1 plus F2, F1 plus F2. For me to have my first, Total. So here you are going to uh, you are going to write this equation, which is first total is equal to F1 plus F2. And F1, we have said if you remember this formula, which we I said this formula doesn't change. So you have to calculate your F1 first, and you also have to calculate your F2. Then after calculating F1, F2, you now add them together. So your F1 is equal to K times Q1 times Q3 divided by R1 squared U R1, which is, this one just a vector, just a vector. So we don't need to, uh, to panic to know what is R1, R1, uh, U R1. This one usually, it just shows the direction where you are going. So now they have given you your Q1 and your Q3. Since you are calculating for F1, so it means the charge which you are going to get is what? Q1, the charge which is, uh, the F1, this charge Q1 is the one which is creating, which is, uh, uh, yeah, which is creating a, a force on Q3 or which is exerting a force on what? On Q3, which you have repulsion, which is F1 because they are positive, positive. So this is Q1. So it will be Q1 times Q3 for F1 divided by, R1 squared. R1 squared actually is the distance AC, 
which have been already given here, the research S is 1.2 meter, R1 squared. So here you just replace, we have said that your constant, if you if you remember your notes, we said that your constant can be either one over four by epsilon or can be nine times 10 to the power nine, which you are going to use here, nine times 10 to the power nine times 1.5, which is your Q1 times 10, negative one times 0 0.2, which is your Q3 times 10, negative three, divided by 1.2, which is the distance between what? A, Q1 and Q3, Q, Q3 which is SC, which is SC, they have given us SC here. Our SC is 1.2. So this is the 1.2, which you put here, 1.2. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Where does that nine times 10 to the power nine come from? Oh, this is the constant. If. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if you remember. Oh, yes, yes, it's from the, from the formula. Okay. I, yeah, I the formula. So constant is always this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's where the nine is coming from. Then these, they, are, uh, they have already given you, this is Q1, 1.5 times 10 to the negative one. And the uh, Q3, which is, since you are always uh, 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 exerting the force on Q3, so this is Q3, 0 0.2 times 10 to the negative three, divided by 1.2 squared. Then you, when you do your mathematics, when you, you punch on your calculator, you have, um, you have, uh, 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 you have uh, uh, 187,500, uh, you have 187,500, which if you want, you can just write it, write it in, in, uh, in, in what, in, 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 in decimal places where you, uh, you, you uh, since here you move, uh, for you to have 1.8, Seven five is just the same thing. You move one, two, three, four. You move five times, which is one point eight seven five times ten to the power five. You know how to do uh, with decimals. When you move, you know uh, when basically here, since the, the the number is really large, you have to write it in simpler form. Like the simplest form is you write it in a sort of a way of in a sort of uh, a decimal. Uh, a decimal, a decimal, uh, a decimal place. So you have 1.875 times 10 to the power five. That's your first one. So you have found your first one. Then your first two, your first two is K, which is always the constant. Q2, Q3 divided by R2, uh, the R2 uh, squared. Uh, so you have, since you have seen here, Q3 is repeating itself. There's Q3, there's Q3 here. Why is repeating itself is because the force is being exerted on Q3. So Q2 is exerting a force on Q3. That's why I say Q2 times what? Q3. So your Q2, you have been given your Q2. Your Q2 is negative 0 0.5 times 10 to the power negative 3. And your Q3 is the same one negative. Uh, your Q3 is the same one, which is 0 0.2 times 10 to the power negative 3, then divided by your R2 squared, your R2 squared is the distance between B and C, which is uh, BC, uh, the distance BC, you have been given BC, which is 0 0.5 here, the distance BC, which is 0 0.5, this is the 0 0.5 here, the 0 0.5 what, squared. Then you do your, your mathematics, then after that you have 3,600, which is your, your force, your force two, which is, you just simplify it by writing it in decimal place, which is 3.6 times 10 to the power of three. Then you'll find your force one and the force two. So that's how you find. So it's, it's just a matter of you just put in the figure. If, if you know the formula, you easily calculate it. Just the matter of you putting the, the figure. So you'll find your force one and the, your force two. So after finding your force one and force two, now you have to calculate your force what total. So how do you calculate your force total? So if you see here, this is the force total, and this force total is uh, 
I can say it creates something like uh, 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 if 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 you see the way it is, is for you to 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 calculate this force total, you have to calculate the module of this force because it's creating something like a. If you see, it's creating something like a right triangle. So for you to know the distance, the distance which is here, the distance, the what, uh, the, the the force which is exerted here, uh, 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 exerted here, you have to know the. Um, you have to what? You have to. Uh, you have to, to to calculate to calculate its module. Its module. When I say the module is uh, just the same as uh, Pythagoras theorem. I was mistaken. Yeah, Pythagoras theorem. So here, since yeah, since you are making a sort of a triangle, a triangle where this one is f1, this distance is what f2. Since the distance here and here is f2, for you to calculate this distance f, you have to use the, uh, the mod module formula, which is the Pythagoras formula. So you have the module of F, which is F total, which is the hypotenuse in this case. So the module of F is equal to the square root of force one squared plus force two squared. You see that the, the, your U R, your, uh, your U one and your U two will disappear. Why? Because we, we say that when you, uh, basically most of the time when you uh, square the vectors, it always gives you one. That's that's that that's the rule. It always gives you one. That's why you see them disappearing. So you just replace where there's force one with your force which you have found, and force two with your force which you have found. Then you do your calculations. Then you find your force total. Your force total, which is uh, yeah, which is one eighty seven thousand five hundred and thirty four point five five six eight newton. Which, if you simplify, it is one point eight seven five times ten to the power five. Newton. So that's how you calculate the force. So for you to calculate the force, the things which you have to know is you have to check the charges. Are they the, the same charges, the charge which is uh, being exerted on another particle, the, the two particles, are they the same? Is it positive or negative? Or is it, uh, uh, are they both positive or is there, uh, 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 yeah, are they both positive or not? Like uh, uh, you can have, are they both the same sign or uh, do they have uh, signs which are, are contrary? So you have to, to be able to, to see that one first. So before you do your calculation, you have to study your diagram first. How is it? You study your question, your question first. How have they asked the question? So from there, you can deduce how to calculate your, uh, how to calculate your, your force switches being, exert, being exerted on uh, one charge, which you are you have been taught to, to calculate on. So I don't know if you have any questions here. Is there anyone with any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Just a general, general question. Yeah, you can ask. Uh, you you're saying something like you're saying that you we are not allowed to use uh, uh, a point uh, a decimal point mm -hmm. uh, dot for uh, for writing the number. So instead, we're supposed to use a comma. Uh, yeah, so is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Like here in, in the the French system, the French system when you when you write a point, they will think that you are multiplying because both this, basically they. They use a point, a dot for them, it means multiplication. But for you, like for, for them, uh, I can say uh, uh, a what? A comma is the one which, which means that you have, uh, uh, how can I say? Uh, 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 in place of a, a dot for you to, uh, for you to have, for them a decimal number, I can say. So a decimal number, they write it in using a comma. When you see one comma five, it means they're just writing a decimal number, which is 1.5. And um, yeah, then when, you, then when you see a point, you should know, like in this case, the point signifies multiplication. So most of the time, the point signifies multiplication. That's, yeah, that's, and, the, and the, I, uh, I advise you to get used to this because when you come here, 
you have some difficulties, you can calculate everything co correctly, but due to uh, uh, you uh, placing where you are supposed to put the comma, you are putting a point, you find that you, uh, they can even mark your whole answer to be incorrect. So you should be careful, you should be very careful with the commas, the points, those things. So on that, isn't that a, a bit of a problem? Because uh, you know, generally we, okay, I don't know, like most people, we use the comma to separate, you know, the large numbers. Like you can say hundred thousand, you put a comma to separate, you know, the hundreds from the one, you know, that that way. So they don't do that. You just write big numbers just like that without anything separating them. Basically, like I've, I've, in French, I've never seen like them. The way the way we do it, if is is a large number, for example, one uh one thousand is something something. If it's a large number, we do separate we do separate them with a comma. But here, I've never seen them separating with a comma. If they put a comma here, it means it's a point. Okay. If if it's a large number. Most of the time, they just write it the way it is. If it's if it's a large number. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But of course, the calculators, like when you're using the calculators, is they is points. They use points. It's only when you are writing that's when you change your way of writing. You have to be using comma. But the calculators, the calculators, there's nothing different. Like the ones which are using Zambia and the ones which are using here, uh, everything just the same. The way you go about it. That's why I was, I was, I was uh, like, I was even wondering why do they use commas, but on the calculator is when, when, when you're punching on the calculator is points which we usually use because that thing has never changed with calculators. So yeah, so you just have to follow them because if, if, if you use your own way, um, they can't even make you. And also. The, the, the other thing, the, the, the Sokatoa one, they don't know the Sokatoa one, the, yeah, the Sokatoa one, they don't know it. They use their, their own formulas, which they use. So when you're using, when you're solving, use, when, when, when you're solving, thinking, in, uh, uh, thinking in line of Sokatoa, you don't need to write it in your, in your book. You just have to just think or write it. Or don't have to write it when you're solving that. I'm using Sokatoa, but they don't know it here. They don't know there is no Sokatoa here. They use um, there are some other things like some other other equation which they use. But uh, since for them they have, when you when you come here you'll be learning with Moroccans and Moroccans they have learnt uh, if it's mathematics they have learnt them from uh, there's those who are just uh, specialized in mathematics where you see someone had had learnt mathematics from childhood and when they when the professor comes in class. The professor will just be teaching, and um, uh, he will like he. The professors they teach as if you know the things. There are some formulas which you won't know where they are coming from. They just bring it and they start solving. So yeah, so um, so uh, there are, there are some things which you yourself using your own knowledge you can use. Like for me personally, I usually use Sokatoa because. That's the thing which I, I learned and uh, and but I don't write it when I'm solving. I just I just use it in my mind. I solve or I just solve it uh, like just aside. Then on the final paper, I don't put it as long as the answer comes out. So yeah, so it's uh, uh, it's really important. Also, the research you have to do a lot of research when you come here. Because the professors, they don't care whether you are followed or not. For them, it's going, going forward. That's why I tell you guys to do a lot of research, like to do a lot of research. You have to, 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 to get used with the system. So we have got this exercise two. Exercise two, we're still on charge punctual. So on exercise one, I think there's, uh, there's no problem. So exercise I have a two, has, yes, you have. Um, you can go back for where you were saving for F2. Where I was what? Where you are saving for F2. Yeah, first uh, yes. Um I know yeah. if there's a negative uh, when solving, do just uh, discard the negative or um, just uh, working error. I don't get your thing. 
Um, we were working with the, the, the Q2. Q2 is negative 0 0.5 times 10 to the power negative 3. Mm -hmm. Now the answer, the answer is positive. Did you just uh, disregard the negative or maybe it's just a working error? Because the final answer was giving me negative 3.6, not positive. If, if, you, if you try what solving it, it will give you negative. I, um, there's a negative in the working here for Q2. Q2 oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Actually, it's supposed to be a negative. Oh, yes. It's supposed to be a negative. Yeah, it's supposed to be a negative. And then, yeah, but you see that when, when you see our, our, our main concern is calculating the first total. When you come to calculate the first total, you know that when you when you square, square. a negative, it always gives you a positive, right? Yes. Hello, are you getting me? Yes, I can get you, yes. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so that was a small error, but it, it was supposed to be negative. So it was supposed to be negative. But we, yeah, but when you come here, when you square it, you still bring you back to positive. Excuse me. Yes. So for instance, in the same question, they ask to calculate the F2. So the answer should be left in negative. If they told you to what? Eh? To calculate the F2, then there's the negative there. So we leave the answer in negative form. Um, this card for that. Let's wait a bit. Uh, basically, um, I can say the the answer, the answer most of the time the answer the force is you can never find the force in what in a negative form. The force must always be positive. So uh, I can say there's a step which I've missed here. That's why there's uh, yes, like you, you, when you're solving, uh, there, there's there's another step where you have to uh, just wait a bit, I check for, I check for, there's a PDF which I had made. Yeah. Are you able to? Are you seeing my sharing? Are you seeing my sharing? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah, this is another PDF which I've had made. This one is a bit, uh, even though it's not clear, but it's a bit detailed. There's a step which, uh, yeah, when when I when I was trying to solve it today, I, I didn't include the step. So, um, so uh, basically, when when for example for F1, when you find your F1, you have uh, one point eight eight times ten to the power five, which is the F1 which you have found. U R one, uh, which is uh, times a vector. So for you, this is your vector F one. So for you to find your force, your force is you should know that force always is a module. So for you to find your force, your F one, it means you have to square root this answer which you have found. Uh, yeah, the, the square root of this answer to the power two, and you know that. Uh, if if you if you square your 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 vector, we say that it's always one. So when you square this one, 1.88 times 10 to the power five. When you square it, it will give you 1.88 times 10 to the power five newton. It's the same with your F2 here. When you do a multiplication, it will give you here. It was supposed to be negative negative 3.6 times 10 to the power three. You are uh, you are which is the vector. Then for you to find so. Here you just uh, you find uh, 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 when you're finding the vector force, you can leave it in negative. 
but when they have told you to find the force, not the vector force, a force, a force is, is, is I can say it's a module. You have to, uh, your answer which you have found, you have to square root to, 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 uh, to, to square it. Yeah, and your answer must be to the power two. You know how to, 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 to calculate module. And your, 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 your vector is just one. So here, just the same, there's one here. And if you do, you see that when any number, as I said earlier, if it's negative, when you square negative, it always gives you a positive. So that's why you have 3.6 times 10 to the power three Newton. So if you are told to calculate just a vector force, you can have a negative, it's possible. But when you are told to calculate a force, just a force, meaning they want you to, uh, uh, what is the actual force like? Uh, you have to calculate its module, which is, is positive. So yeah, it's supposed to be negative. So I don't know if it's clear. The one last equation. So yeah, it's possible you can have yeah. a negative, but you can only have a negative when it's a vector force, when you have a vector force with an arrow per number, which shows that it's, the, it shows, uh, the vector force, it shows the, the, the direction of the force. You can have a negative, but yeah, the vector, yeah. But when you have uh, uh, the module, the module shows the, the, I can say the magnitude of a force, the magnitude is, uh, um, uh, yeah, the, I can say the magnitude of the force, you don't need to include the negative. So it depends how they, have, how they have asked you the question. Like for example, here, they have asked you, calculate the force result now. They've just asked you, calculate the force. Basically, most of the time, they, 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 they ask you, calculate the force, the force result, that, those things. They'll never, they'll, uh, I can say, in most cases, you have to leave your force in a magnitude form, a force, since force, the, 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 what, uh, uh, the unit for force is Newton. You have to leave it in its, uh, 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 its, what, its, its magnitude form, which means your force will never be negative, it's always positive. Yes, you wanted to ask something? Yeah, from the previous, uh, from the previous document. So the vector force for F2, it's negative three point exponential three. Yeah, it's a so negative. The negative. Yeah, it's a negative. Okay. Then now when you are finding your actual force, your force, which is where there's no vector. If you have seen here, I've never, I've, I've, I've not written uh, like it's, it's not a vector force. You're saying it's, it's positive, it has to be positive. Okay. Thank you. I don't know if it's clear. Uh, yes, it's clear. Mm, okay. So I'm going to go to exercise two. Exercise two, we are still on charge point QA. Charge point QA is a charge which you can identify, which you can point out. Uh, yeah. So example, uh, the one which you are from seeing where you've got charges which are, uh, they're on a fixed point, you know where they are, you, they are identifiable, like you can, uh, you can, uh, uh, you can, you can, uh, you can, you can, you can point them, you can easily identify them. So uh, we're going to go to uh, exercise two, which is charge for, uh, yeah, the charge function. So you start with the charges, positive function, Q1 is equal to, three times 10 to the power negative, negative eight column. So we have two charges, which are positive. So we have Q1, which is three times 10 to the power negative eight column. And Q2, which is six times 10 to the power negative eight column. So fix A, uh, maintain our own distance, D is equal to 0 0.5. So here they're saying you have got two charges, which are positively charged. You have got what? Two charges, uh, two two particles which uh, two particles which are positively charged. You have got Q1, which is is equal to three times ten to the power negative eight columns, and you have got Q2, which is six times ten to the power negative eight columns, and they are fixed at a distance which is what zero point five. So the distance between the charge one and the charge two is what zero point five what meter. Then now they ask you 
à quelle distance x de q1 faut-il placer une charge négative? So they ask you uh, a question is at which distance x, a distance which you don't know x of q1 or from q1, can you place a charge negative pour qu'elle soit en équilibre sur l'action des forces exercées par Q1 et Q2. So they say, at which distance X from Q1, starting from Q1, can you place a Q3, uh, a charge negative Q3, uh, such that the, uh, the, uh, the action of forces, the forces which are acting on Q3, Q1 and Q3, Q1 and Q2, the, 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 the charges Q1 and Q3, Q2, when they act a force on Q3, they create an equilibrium. They create uh, 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 forces which, I can say, they create uh, uh, forces which, uh, I can say, eco, eco forces. And you know, if you have got eco forces, uh, uh, what usually happens is they, 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 they uh, if, 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 if you have eco forces, if the forces are equilibrium, what usually happens if you, you subtract those forces, it has to give you zero. That's what it's supposed to be. So they're saying you have to find a way of placing Q3 from Q1 such that the, uh, the, what, the, 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 the forces Q, uh, from uh, the forces Q1 and the forces from charge Q1 and charge Q2, uh, 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 they, 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 they are exerted on Q3 and those forces they create an equilibrium. They create a balance. When they act on Q3, they create a balance in such a way that these forces, when they act on Q3, they cancel each other. The forces when they act on Q3, they cancel each other and a balance, you know, equilibrium, meaning it will give you equals to what to zero. So now we are going to uh, uh, we are going to place. Q3, we're going to, to, to do a drag gum. So here they, they just gave us in form of writing. So you have to imagine how do I draw a diagram? You have to imagine that. So um yeah, so when it comes to a diagram, when it comes to a diagram, if you see your question, your question is saying that if you see uh, if you see your question here is saying that. I get distance x the q1 for t plus on charge negative q3. So it's saying at which distance x? At which distance x? So which distance x from q1 should I place what q3? So there's q1, you have what q3. So they're saying which distance what x? This is x from what q1 should I place q3 in such a way that the forces which are coming from Q1 and Q2 are balanced, meaning they are canceling each other. So you have got a distance which is X from Q1, and they have told you that, if you see here, they have told you that Q1 and Q2 are fixed on a distance which is what? D, which is equal to what? 0.5 what? Meter. So if you have the distance from Q1 to Q3, which is x. It means that the distance from Q3 to Q2 to Q2 is d minus the distance which is here, which is x. So this is the diagram which you have. And they have told you that Q1 is if if if, if, if you see here, they have told you that the charges are positive. So Q1 and Q2 are positive, and they have told you that Q3 is what negative. So you have Q1, which is positive. Q3, which is negative, Q2, which is positive. And we know that the forces are exerted by Q1 on Q3 and Q2 on what? Q3. That's how the forces are exerted. So when you exert a force from Q1 towards Q3, you see that since this is negative, this is positive, you see that uh, Q3 is like it's being drawn to what? To Q1. And when you exert a force, from Q2 to Q3, you see that Q3 also is being what, drawn to Q2 because Q2 is positive, Q3 is negative. So that's why I've seen this arrow, which is, this is the arrow for uh, 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 the Q1, which is 
the force of attraction. And this is the arrow forward. Uh, uh, I can say Q2, which is also the force of attraction towards what? Q2. And uh, since, since Q1 is the one which is exerting uh, yeah, the force on Q3, you see that you have to get the force forward F1. And here, since Q2 is the one which is exerting the force on Q3, you have to get the force of what? F2. And the distance of already, which is X, D minus what? X. So here they are, uh, yeah. <clears throat> here they explain how you have to draw the diagram, which I've already uh, explained. So yeah, they're just explaining how, to, how to, you have to draw the diagram. And, uh, and, uh, and they say the like, charge Q3 draw at the place uh, on distance take the force electrostatic exercised by the charge Q1 so again. And opposite a la force electrostatic exercised by Q2 to so Q3. So they are saying that you uh, your charge Q3, as I said here, has to be placed on a point where uh, where you, you have to place uh, at a distance where the force exists, uh, 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 the force which is um, uh, where the force uh, uh, exerted by charge Q1 must be equal and opposite to the force which is uh, exerted by what? Q2 on Q3. So you have to place it here in such a way that you have to place it at a distance where the force which is exerted by Q1 is equal and opposite to the force which is exerted by what? Q2, that's what they are saying. You don't have to put Q3 outside here. Uh, like when, when you put it outside here, it means Q3 is only affected by the charge, which is Q2, because you have, you have put Q3 outside. Imagine you put Q3 outside Q2, meaning the only effect, the, uh, the, the, the uh, Q2 is the only one which is exerting a force on Q3. Then the, the other way around also, I mean, when I try to put Q3 outside here on Q1, I'll see that it's only Q1 which is exerting a force on Q3. So the best thing is to put it on the mid so that both of them, they are exerting force, force on what? Q3. And we say that there must be incurable. So for you to calculate your force total, your force total is equal to F1 plus F2, which is equal to what? Zero. Since it's incurable, meaning your force, your your first one and your first two, uh, when they come together, they cancel each other and you have your result at which is what zero. Since you need to have uh, the force which is balanced or the, the force which is acting uh, on Q3 must be on, uh, 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 yeah, on equilibrium, must be balanced. So you have your F1 plus your F2 is equal to what zero. So basically most of the time when you see the word equilibrium on your question, you have to know that your sum of your forces must be equal to what? Zero. Your force total must be equal to what? Zero. So now uh, you have to calculate your force one and your force two. So it's, it's the same procedure how you did with the, the, how we did with the previous, yeah, how we did with the previous uh, question. It's the same procedure. So you have to calculate your F1 and your F2. So your F1 is equal to uh, here, instead of me writing K, I said K can be represented in two ways. You can write it either nine times 10 to the power nine, or you can write one over four to the, one over four pi epsilon. So here, uh, it's better to write, since they haven't given us the values of X, the values of the distance, I can say so. I can say so. They haven't given us the value of the distance between Q1 and Q2 and Q3, and they have, they have just given us, uh, I can say variables like uh, letters, X, what they haven't, uh, they haven't given us the actual value. So for you to uh, calculate uh, your what, your uh, your force, it's better to use the one for one, uh, for one over, your K must be equal to one over four pi epsilon zero. But if you are given all the values, like if it's a straightforward decalculation, you can just use the, that one, nine times 10 to the power nine, or, or if you want to can use the one, one, uh, one over four pi epsilon zero. So here, so here they have used one, K is equal to one over four pi epsilon zero. So you have your Q1, your Q1 times your Q3, where is exerting the force, 
divided by the distance. The distance between here is in the form of letter, which is x2. We don't know the distance, x2, uh, with a vector. Since the vector is directed towards q3, it will be u1. Then your f2, your f, your f2 is q2 times q3 divided by 4 pi epsilon d minus x squared u2, the vector u2. Then from here now, you uh, you do your your calculation. You just you just replace it where there there is what f here. You just replace where there f here. So when you replace, since we have said that q three is negative, if q three is negative, you only multiply a negative and a positive, you will get a negative. So you have negative q one q three divided by four pi epsilon x two u one minus, since Q3 is negative, it will be negative here, minus Q2, U3, divided by four pi epsilon zero, D minus X squared, U2 is equal to what? Zero. So I'm just replacing on this equation. So when you do your uh, replacing, you should also note that, eh? you should also note that if you see here, you have U1, U1 is, uh, Q, uh, U1 is a direction. Uh, if, if you see the direction of uh, the force which is exerted in Q3, there's this direction which is uh, is going uh, 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 is coming from the what the yeah is 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 coming from the uh, left side going towards the what the right side. Yeah, it's coming from the left side going towards the left side. If you see your Q1 here. Your Q1, the direction is from left towards right, and your U are uh, not Q, yeah, Q1. If you see your U1, the direction is from the direction of U1 is from the left towards the right, and if you see your direction of U2 is what from the uh, right towards the left. So it's acting in opposite. That's why you have seen here. For me to simplify my things, I'll just say that. Um, I'll just say, if I want, I can say U1 is equal to negative U2 because they're opposite, or U2 is equal to what? Negative U1. So in this case, <clears throat> I'm going to use, uh, yeah, in this case, I'm going to use U2 is equal to what? Negative U1. So if if I want, I can, I can use uh, the, the first one, the U1 is equal to negative U2, e either one which you want to use, but you just have to show that the vectors, the direction, they are in opposite direction. The, 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 the vectors are moving in opposite direction. For you to, move, to, to show that they are moving in opposite direction, one must be positive, the other one must be what? Negative. So either one which you want to choose. So if you choose, like in, in my case, I choose the U2 is equal to what? Negative U1, which, <clears throat> which I'm just showing that uh, the opposite of U2, is equal to, yeah, the opposite of U2 is equal to negative U1 because they are all coming back on the center and you said that they are all in equilibrium. Then if you if you do so now, you just replace where there's U2, you place it by what? Negative U1. So you have U2 here. So here where there's U2, you replace it by negative what? U1. When you place by negative U1, it will become what? Positive since it will be positive Q2 times Q3 divided by four pi epsilon zero D minus X squared U1 is equal to zero. So I don't know if there's anyone with any question until here. Anyone with any question? And just repeat what you are saying. Yeah, so, um, if you see here the directions, there's U1 and U2. U1 is coming from the left towards the right, the direction, and U2 is coming from uh, the right towards the left. So here, like my main goal is for me to calculate X. For me to calculate X, I have to uh, find a way of making my equation to have uh, similar, uh, similar variables. So the first thing which I do here is, uh, after I write my equation here, I have to check how can I make the vectors to be similar. So I know that 
basic. The, these vectors are opposite towards each other, like they are, they are, they are, they are coming opposite, they are, they are opposite towards each other. And uh, I know that if U1 is positive, U2 must be negative. If U2 is negative, U1 must be positive. So the positive and the negative, they are just showing the what? The, uh, the opposite of these two, uh, these two, what? these two vectors. So, um, so uh, if, if you, uh, for example, U2. So I said, for me, I'll use this one here, which shows that U2 is equal to negative U1. And if I use this one, I, it means where there's U2 here, I'll replace by what? A negative U1. So if I replace by a negative U1, it means negative times negative, it will give me positive. Then I'll have Q2, Q3 divided by four pi epsilon zero, D minus X squared, U1. So if you have seen, I've introduced U1 and U1, which are equal vectors. So here, the main goal is first you introduce the equal vectors. So you, you want, uh, we want to calculate the for X. Then after we introduce the main, the, the similar vectors, we can take one, the other side. So here they decided to take positive Q1, a positive, uh, yeah, Q2, Q3, divided by four pi epsilon d minus x squared, they decided to take it to cross it over the, the equal side. And you know that when you cross something which is positive to, uh, over the equal side, you're going to have uh, a negative. And so here you have uh, negative q1, q3, divided by four pi epsilon zero x squared, u1, which is equal to negative q2, q3, divided by four epsilon zero d minus what, x2, U1. Then after I, I do this, I just do cross multiplication. I think from here, is simple things like you just do cross multiplication. So if I do cross multiplication, I'll do this one times the down one here, the Q1, Q3, U1 times four pi epsilon, open bracket, D minus X, close bracket, where I do the cross multiplication, then I also do the cross multiplication of this one, negative Q2, Q3 times four pi epsilon X squared. This is Yeah, this is what you get here. Then when you reach this stage now, you can just do some division where you are, uh, yeah, you can just do, if you see there's four pi, epsilon zero and u1, four pi epsilon zero, u1 and q3, q3, which are of the same value. So I can just, uh, I can just divide by those values. Four pi epsilon zero, u1, q3, uh, yeah, q3, four pi epsilon zero, u1. If I divide by them, I only remain with it. negative q1, d minus x squared is equal to negative q2, x squared. Then from there now, I, um, I expand this one, d minus x. If, after expanding d minus x, uh, I'll have something like d squared plus dx minus dx minus x squared, where plus dx minus dx, you give you zero. So you just have d squared minus x squared. If I do, uh, if I multiply with q1, it will be negative q1 d squared plus q1 x squared is equal to negative q2 x squared then you have seen there's x squared. I'll just take this one, the other side. Then uh, I do somewhat, I do some factorizing. Yeah, yeah, you, you have x squared brackets, negative q2 minus q1. Then uh, I'll just divide the negative q2 divided by negative q1, which is negative q2 divided by negative q1, this side and the other side. Then since this one will be x squared, uh, it means I'll do square root here and square root here. Then uh, since I've been given Q1, the, I've been given the value of Q1, which is here, the value of uh, Q1, which is this value, and the value of Q2, which is this value. And I've also been given the value of D. So I've just replaced uh, in my values here. I'll just replace. Q1 is the negative three times 10 to the power negative eight times 0 0.5 squared. 
uh, then Q2 is negative six times 10 to the power negative eight minus three times 10, neg 10 to the power negative eight, which is equal to 0 0.289 meters. So the distance X is 0 0.289 meter for you to have it, the equilibrium. I don't know if there's any questions here. <clears throat> Is there anyone with any question? Just kindly scroll up uh, with the writing of copy notes there. What you are saying? I'm saying kindly just scroll up, scroll up a bit there. Mm -hmm. I don't know, down, down. No, down, down. The down last, last step. Yeah. Yes. Uh, again. Okay, yes, fine. You see, yeah. Yes. You wanted the... Yeah, just there, it's fine. What? Just there, it's fine. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe you, is there somewhere where you wanted me to explain here or what? What I was saying, I was, I was, I was copying. I was writing down what's there. So I just, I wanted to see. Okay. okay. Understood. I'll, I'll, I'll send the PDF to you. Oh, uh, all right, all right. Oh, yeah, I'll send, I'll send the PDF okay. in the group. I don't know if there's Excuse anyone with any other question. Excuse me. <clears throat> yes. Yes. So do we all have to take this long procedure or we can replace the numbers up there? If you want, but but if you place the numbers, you like it will it will be uh you mean like starting from the first I start placing the numbers. No, not starting, not really starting from the first. <clears throat> Because if if it's like uh, if it's like you you say that uh, uh, in a case of placing the numbers, it will be very difficult for you to simplify the uh, your equation. You what? Yeah, it will be very difficult for you to simplify the equation. So the best thing, like uh, uh, with these questions, which uh, uh, they have got a lot of things to do, the best thing is you have first to simplify your equation. After you simplify your equation, that's when you can now. Uh, put your what your your numbers now because it's, it's really difficult for you to simplify if you uh, imagine you have placed uh, three times uh, ten negative eight six times ten negative eight and you are trying to, uh, to, to 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 simplify your equation you you have a diff, difficult uh, time to simplify it okay yeah so the best thing is First, you, uh, you do it uh, last after you have simplified it. You just now uh, put in the figures, the numbers, then you solve. Um, could you kindly explain, like starting from here, why should I negative Q1 d squared plus Q1 x squared is equals to, like, how did we come up with a negative Q squared? Um, two x squared. Well, here is where's negative q1 d squared plus q1 x squared plus mm -hmm. for how we came about it. So basically, I said, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, after, after you have made your equation to be similar, you have u1, u1, what you do is you just take this uh you you take uh one part of the equation and you cross it over the equal sign which will be negative q2 q3 u1 divided by i've just i've just gotten this one here and i've taken the other side so you have seen that it, it was positive it will become what negative then from there i just did cross multiplication where i did this the upper one q1 q3 u1 times the down one uh, when you cross the equal sign, which is four pi epsilon d minus x squared. This is this is the value here after I did the cross multiplication. Then also the negative q2 q3 times uh, 
uh, when I cross the uh, equal sign, uh, the value which is down here, four pi epsilon zero x squared. This is the value which is this side here. So after that now, I, it's just a matter of now simplifying it. I know that I have four pi epsilon zero, we, and here also have four pi epsilon zero. I know that I have Q3 and here also have what? Q3. And I know that I have a vector U1 and also here I have a vector U1 when I cross the uh, equal sign. So you see that uh, I can easily simplify by eliminating the four pi epsilon zero, the Q3 and the, the U1. That's why here I just, when I came here, I just divided. I divided four pi epsilon zero, uh, U1, Q3, which you see Q3, Q3 will cancel out, U1, U1 will cancel out, four pi epsilon, four pi epsilon will cancel out, which makes me to remain just with negative Q1, D minus X squared, which is equal to, if you see here, also you see that uh, four pi epsilon zero, four pi epsilon zero cancel out, U1, U1 will cancel out, Q3, Q3 will cancel out, which I'll remain just with it. negative Q2 X squared, which is negative Q2 X squared and negative Q1 D minus uh, X uh, or, or, or yeah, or negative Q1 open bracket D minus X close bracket squared. Then uh, from there, you know, uh, you have to expand this one. The difference of uh, two squares, you know, is uh, so for me to expand it to be D minus X times D plus X, then I do the, 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 what, the, uh, the multiplication here. So D times D will have D squared plus D times positive X, which will be DX, negative X times D, which will be negative DX, negative X times positive X, which will be negative X squared, then DX, dx, they will cancel out because this one is positive, this one is negative, so they will give you zero. So you only remain with d squared minus x squared. So negative q1 times d squared, it will give you negative q1 d squared. Negative q1 times negative x squared, it will give you positive q1 x squared, which is equal to negative q2 x2. Then from there, you just uh, uh, you just do your, uh, your what now? Since you have seen the x squared, the x squared, there's like them and you are, you, 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 are, you are trying to find your X, your X squared. So this, uh, the uh, positive Q1 X squared will go the other side. When it goes the other side, it will become what? Negative. When it becomes negative, you do uh, the factor rising where you, your X squared, uh, you, 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 you remove the X squared and the, when you remove your X squared, you have negative Q2 minus Q1. And from there, just divide by negative Q2, negative Q1, which is here, but negative Q2, negative Q1, the both sides here and here, which will be negative Q2 minus Q1. Uh, it will be negative Q1, D2, D, D squared, divided by negative Q2 minus Q1. Since C is X squared, I square root, and I also square root here. And from, from there, you, uh, you calculate your X. Your X, you just replace where there's Q1 and D squared, and the, negative q2 minus q1 this is the replacing which we did here then you have your final answer i don't know if it's clear yes it is yeah so basically that's uh how you you, you do with it yeah that's how we do it yeah and due to time i was about, we were supposed to do one last uh, example but due to time won't do it yeah won't do it just try uh, checking through it out. I'll, I'll, I'll send the PDF. Just try checking through it. Yeah. Okay, okay, then have a, uh, a nice day. Yeah, and you enjoy the rest of your lessons.